Hello. Today we will study Chapter Nineteen, Statistical Method for Quality Control, Part One. We will start with some basic concepts. A, a process. A process is any business activity that takes inputs and transforms them into output. And you have input. After a process, you're going to have output. So, for example, the input is auto parts. After a process, output is automobiles. B, quality control. Quality control is a series of inspections and measurements used. To determine whether quality standards are being met, in our study, we use statistical methods to detect and fix problems in a process. We will use the so-called control chart to achieve our goal. Now, let's answer the questions of what is a control chart. Control chart is a graphical tool used to help us determine whether a process is in control or out of control. In our study, the control chart displays consecutive measurements. Of a process, together with a center line CL, an upper control limit UCL, and a lower control limit LCL. And here is an example of a control chart. You have UCL center line LCL, and in the control chart. Our measurements are plot in time order, and there is a time dynamic associated with our measurements. To determine whether or not a process is in control, we are going to consider three cases. Case number one: if All points are within the control limit, and no pattern over time. Then the process is in control. Now, condition number one: all points are within the control limit, and we look at our measurements or our data, and we locate the largest. Value from our data set. This value had to be below your upper control limit, and we also will locate our smallest value from our measurement, and this value has to be above the lower control limit to satisfy this condition number one. All points. Are within the control limit. After condition number one is satisfied, we will look for pattern. If no pattern over time, then condition number two is also satisfied, and then we can say the process is in control. Case number two: at least one point is outside of the control limit. The process is out of control. I would like to mention that some other books may give you some percentage of the points that is outside the control limit and still say that the process is in control. But for this class, if you detect one point that is outside of the control limit. We will say the process is out of control, 
And case number three, a pattern over time. The process is out of control. So if you can detect an upward trend or a downward trend, then you detected a pattern. In which case, the process is out of control. And this is an example of an upward trend is detected. Now, let's study some control charts. The first one on the list is this mean chart or the x-bar chart. The x-bar chart or the mean chart is used to monitor the process average. And again, we need to find the upper control limit, the lower control limit, and the center line for the control chart. And for this case, we are going to have the following information. You have this sigma is given, or sigma, the population standard deviation is given. In this case, we first compute the standard error of the mean sigma x bar, which is equal to sigma over square root of n, and the standard line for the mean chart will be mu. The mean mu is the population mean. Now, the upper control limit for x bar chart will be the standard line plus 3 times sigma x bar, which is mean mu plus 3 times sigma over square root of n. Now, for the lower control limit, the equation will be 19.3. It will be the center line minus 3 times sigma over square root of n. Or you said mean mu minus 3 times sigma x bar. And let's see this example. Example number one. Temperature is used to measure the output of a production process. When the process is in control, the mean of the process is mu equals to 128.5, and the standard deviation is sigma equals to 0.4, and I ask you to compute the upper control limit and the lower control limit for this mean chart or x bar chart if the sample size is 6. So now this mu equal to 128.5 will be our center line. And then the upper control limit is equal to mu plus 3 times sigma x bar, and this is from equation 19.2, which is 128.5 plus 3 times sigma, which is 0.4 over square root of n, which is square root of 6, and you use your calculator, and your upper control limit will be 128.99. Now, the lower control limit is equal to the center line minus 3 times sigma x bar, which is 128.5 minus 3 times 0.4 over square root of 6, which is 128.01. B. If the first two measurements are x bar 1 equals to 129.25 and x bar 2 equals to 128.2. What can you say about the process? So you have this first data point, which is x bar 1 equal to 129.25, which is above your upper control limit. And 
at least one pawn is outside of the control limits, so the process is out of control. Now, here's another case, and this is also for the X bar chart, but sigma, the standard deviation for, from the population is not given. So this is case number two for this X bar chart. And in this case, we first consider this concept. We consider the following data structure. We have a population. We will take consecutive measurements with sample size n for, say, each date for k days or each hour for k hours. And for day number one or group number one, we have this sample size n from which we compute the mean x bar 1 and range r1. And then for this subgroup 2, we compute the mean x bar 2 and range r2 from this sample size n. And the last one is for subgroup k and the sample size is again n from which we'll be able to compute the mean x bar k and rk. And say, if we take consecutive measurements for each day for 10 days, and the sample size for each day is 4, then you have k equals to 10, n equals to 4. So from the data, it's very important to find out what is your n and what is your k. Now, let us study the equations for computing the lower control limit, the upper control limit, and the center line for this S bar chart. Equation 19.4 overall sample mean. X bar bar is equal to X bar 1 plus X bar 2 all the way to X bar K over K. And this is the mean of the mean. So you have X bar bar. Note, this X bar bar is the center line for the X bar chart. Now, from equation 19.5, we'll be able to compute the average range, that's R bar. And R bar is equal to R1 plus R2 all the way to Rk over K. And this R bar is the center line for this R chart we are going to study from the next slide. Now, the control limits, the upper control limit and the lower control limit for this S bar chart with standard deviation unknown is given by this equation, X bar bar plus or minus A2 times R bar. So the upper control limit will be X bar bar plus A2 times R bar, and the lower control limit will be X bar bar minus A2 times R bar. Now, the control limits for an R chart, and this R chart is a control chart for the range, the largest value minus the smallest value. It's used to monitor the variation in the process. And from the last slide, this R bar is going to be our center line for this R chart. Then the upper control limit for R chart will be computed by this equation 19.14. And UCL is R bar times D4 and 
the lower control limit, LCL, is equal to R bar times D3. This is from equation 19.15. Now, the next question will be, what is A2, D3, and D4? So, A2, D3, and D4 is the control factor obtained from a table based on the sample size n, based on n, okay? Not based on k, it's based on n. So you can see, and this is the table, and it's table 19.3. And observations in sample, this is n. This is telling you we use n to determine A2, D3, and D4. For example, if n equals to 5, then A2 is 0.577, and D3, capital D3, is 0, and capital D4 is 2.114. Now, let's see our example. Example number 2. A toothpaste manufacturer monitors the amount of active ingredients found in a tube. Five samples are drawn each day for eight days with the following data. What can you say about the process? So you have day one, day two, all the way to day eight. K is eight. Now you draw five samples each day for eight days, so your N is five. Now, to determine whether or not a process is in control or out of control, we need to compute the center line, the upper control limit, and the lower control limit. Now, for the center line of R chart, and you have this R bar equals the sum of Ri over K. So your sum of Ri will be 1.104 and your K is 8. So you have 1.104 over 8 to get this 0.138. And then to find the center line for the X bar chart, we have the mean of the mean. So this is equal to sum of xi bar over k, and this is 56.96 over 8 to get this 7.12. Now, n equals to 5, we need to compute d3, d4, and a2. And this is from our previous table. So you have this n equals to 5, and a2 is 0.577, and your d3 is 0, and your d4 is 2.114. Now, find the upper control limit and the lower control limit for this x bar chart and the r chart. So, Using our equation, the upper control limit for x bar chart will be x bar bar plus a2 times r bar, which is 7.12 plus 0.577 times 0.138, which is 7.2. And your lower control limit is x bar bar minus a2 times r bar, which is 7.12 minus 0.577 times 0.138, which is 7.040. For the R chart, the upper control limit is r bar times d4, which is 0.138 times 2.114, which is 292 and the lower control limit 
is r bar times d3, which is 0.138 times 0, which is 0. Is, is the process in control or out of control? We first consider this R chart, and now we locate the largest value for the range, and which is 0.163, and we also locate the smallest value for the range, which is 0.107. Now, the maximum, which is 0.163, is less than your upper control limit, and your minimum, 0.107, is above your lower control limit. So all data points are within the control limit. Condition number one is satisfied. Now, now, for condition number two, whether or not we have pattern over time. And based on this given data set, there is no pattern over time. So from the R chart, the process is in control. Now, we need to look at the X bar chart. For this X bar chart, we again locate the largest value and the smallest value and compare with our control limits. So when we look at our mean, the largest value is 7.14. And you compare the 7.14 with the upper control limit and the upper control limit is 7.2. So at least one point is outside of the control limit associated with your X bar chart. And condition number one is not satisfying. So the process is out of control based on your X bar chart. Overall, based on both charts, the process is out of control.